Keep opening and side stretching to achieve the compass shape. everyone welcome to another episode of on the mat we have a very special episode today i have brought two members of our community onto the mat so this is hazel and this is veronica hazel and veronica are really really consistent students they are regulars to our studio and a really beautiful part of our community so i'm really really honored to have them come down and take you through today's sequence hazel has been with us for one and a half years now and Veronica, as early as I can remember, has been with me. She has even been taking my classes before I started this school. So the theme of Compass Hips today is a hip opening theme that focuses on the stretching of the side body, as well as the openness of your hips. Feel free to take this into a 60 minute practice by incorporating a small grounding session at the start and a nice long Shavasana at the end. So shall we begin our practice? Okay, let's start. So begin your practice lying down, face up on the mat. Arms and legs spread, comfortably wide like in a Shavasana. We will start our sequence today with a gentle stretching, preparing side body and hips. So when you're ready to move the body, bring your feet together and arms overhead. Give yourselves a big, beautiful stretch from the fingertips to the toes. Now gently walking the arms all the way to the right side of your mat and walking the feet to the right as well. So finding here a side body stretch. Stay in if you want a deeper stretch. You might be crossing the left foot over the right ankle. You might be Clasping the left wrist with the right hand to pull yourself in deeper and actively. The stretch you are experiencing along the left side of the body. Try to bring it all the way down to the hip and all the way up to the shoulder as well. So you will find that if you fully extend out the arms and legs, that helps you to find that stretch in shoulders and hips. So let's stay for one more breath in this position. Exhale, release what you are doing and switch sides. Walking the arms and legs to the left. Beautiful, staying or crossing right ankle over left and maybe even clasping the right wrist. Maximum lengthening on the right side of the body. You are also ensuring that you are minimally creating any kind of compression on the left side. In this way, we use our side bends to create more and more lengthening of the body. One more breath. And then come back to the center back to a neutral position. You can lower the arms down and then both knees to the chest. We are going to do a gentle rocking, rocking motion to bring us up to seated and then from seated turn to face the front of your mat. Arrange yourselves to tabletop, hands and knees position with the palms flat underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Very nice. Start to work with the breath. Now arch your body on the inhalation. Good, round your back on the exhalation. Again, arch your spine, inhale. It means you are looking up as you lift the tailbone. Exhale, round your back. Good, inhale. Find a movement in your spine, maximize that range of motion. Exhale, you are actively pushing the heart away from the mat as you send the tailbone downwards. Let's do one final one. Inhale, take your deep as long as breath. On the exhale, bend your elbows. Let's lead the chest down to the mat, chin forward, but keep your hips high to Astanga Prana. Then with the next breath, lower the hips down. Extend your feet behind you. 
and lift up in a baby cobra. Strong back muscles engaging. Good. Exhale back, tabletop position, hands and knees pose. Then from hands and knees, let's do something slightly different. Start to lift your right shin out to the side in a sideways tuck. Now hold and let's make a few minor corrections here. We don't want to lift the right buttock as we lift the right knee. Good. So this ensures that you are really, really working to achieve the full range of motion in the hip joint without compensating with the lower back or the glute. And let's do some repetitions. Exhale, bring the knees down together again. Inhale, lift. Good. Exhale, the knee comes down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, the knees come down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knees come down. And inhale, lift. Last one, the knees come down and lifting one more time with a deep, long breath. Beautiful. And then with the exhale, as you draw the knees down, chest and chin to the mat, Astanga Pranam. Work with your breath. Inhale, baby cobra. Strong back muscles. And back to tabletop pose, hands and knees position. Now lifting the left shin up, inhale. Take a moment feeling into the hips and what they are doing. As you lift that left shin up, you avoid lifting the left hip. Beautiful. And really find that full range of motion in the joint. Exhale, bringing the knees back together again. And inhale, lift. Good. Exhale, the knees come down. And inhale, lift. Exhale, the knees come down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, come down. Inhale, lift. Let's do one last round. Awakening those beautiful stabilizing muscles. Exhale, come down. And inhale, lift. Good. Now we bring knees back together on the mat and take a breath in. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, come down. Inhale, a baby cobra. Now rising to your first downward facing dog position. Arriving with a beautiful straight spine by creating length. Lengthening from the hands to the tailbone. If you need to, the knees can be slightly bent in this pose and the heels slightly lifted. And for now, simply paddle out your feet like you are walking, walking the dog. One knee bent, opposite leg straight. Take a moment here, giving the ankles and hamstrings a stretch. Awakening muscles in the legs. Maybe swaying the hips side to side, perhaps one shoulder towards the mat at a time. Good, come up and tiptoes, inhale with the hips high. Exhale as you bend knees, gaze forward in front of you. Inhale, you step carefully to the front of the mat, left foot, right foot forward. And an inhale, reaching, lengthening up to standing position. Arms go up and over. Good. Exhale, bring hands down to the mat in a forward bend. Stay with the breath. Inhale, halfway lift, look up. Exhale, please step your left foot back and lower the left knee down gently. So explore your low lunge pose. Inhale, arms go up, find length in the front body and openness in chest and shoulders. As you exhale, allow the hips to sink a little bit deeper. But as they do so, as you feel the deepening of the stretch, please remember to hug the legs inwards towards each other. Outer hips hugging inwards to find stability in the pelvic joints. Beautiful. Let's take this into a side body stretch. Bring the right hand down, trying to touch the mat. Extend the left arm up and over to the right. Good. So the left hand is at the level of the hip. Stay for five. Yes. Four, three, two, and one. As you release, please take that left arm and reach for the back leg. Left arm reaching the left leg. 
as far back as you can reach, perhaps to the knee, to the ankle, maybe even the heel. And then lift the right arm up and over, finding an alternate side stretch. Like a reverse warrior, except from the lower body, you are still maintaining the alignment of a low lunge pose. Stay trying to maximize the length in the right side without collapsing or compressing into the left. We hold for five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Now as you release, place the hands down in front of you and pull your hips back to straighten the front leg. As you do so, flex the foot so the toes point upwards towards the head. Look upwards and create lengthening of the body. Good. Exhale, start to fold into Ardha Hanuman Asana, your half monkey pose, which you try to maintain along with your breathing. Using every inhale to lengthen more. Using the exhale to deepen your stretch. And that'll do. Rock the body forwards, ground the palms firmly on the mat, and send that right leg to three-legged dog, extending it back on the inhale. Beautiful. Exhale, tucking the right knee to the chest, and set the right foot in front of you. Now explore the same practice from a high lunge position. Keep the back heel lifted, push forward through the back heel, straighten that back leg, and then start to lift the arms upwards, opening chest and shoulders. Exhale, sink as deep as you can into this expression, but mindful to keep the front knee stacked above the ankle of the foot. Good, so from here, side body stretch to the right, inhale. Uh-huh, that works. And then side body stretch to the back leg. Exhale. This takes you to a reverse warrior. So feel free to ground the back heel now. Turning the hips. Sliding that left arm down your back leg. And finding the maximum length of the right side of the body. For five. Four. Three. Two. And one beautiful practice. Now bring hands down to the mat in front of you. Stepping back your feet, plank pose, high push up position. From plank, take your option to lower down either a knees, chest, chin, or if you have a chaturanga, a low push up. Inhaling to an upward dog or a cobra pose. Exhale to downward facing dog, straight spine. Beautiful. Then come up and tiptoes on the inhalation. Exhale, knees to chest. We are looking forwards. Next inhale, step to the front, left foot, right foot forwards. And let's go directly back with the right leg this time. Right foot all the way to the back of the mat. Right knee down. Good. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sink as deep as you can go into the expression of Anjani Asana. The stretching of the back of the front leg and the front of the back leg stabilized with inner leg engagement. Beautiful. Lower the left hand down, supporting on the mat. Extend right arm up and over to the left. Find your side body stretch for five. Four. So from the left knee behind you. Three. The right knee behind you. All the way up to the fingertips to create that stretch and one take it to the opposite way the right hand now reach for the back foot the left arm extends maximum lengthening left side minimum compression left side five four three two and one, place hands down to the mat carefully, grounding into the palms and then sending your hips back to a halfway lift with a straight front leg with a flexed foot. Good. Exhale, then fold, coming down. Ardha Hanuman Asana, hamstring stretching. Left leg for five. 
four, three, two, and that will do. Slowly rock the body forwards again. Extend left foot back. Three-legged dog. Inhale. One beautiful length. Very nice. Tuck position. Left knee comes to the chest. Shoulder stack above the wrists. And then set your left foot in front of you on the mat. Ensure you have a straight right leg. You have a lifted heel. The heel pushes forward almost like a tiptoe. Keep the front knee stacked above the ankle. And inhale up. Ashta Chandrasana. Beautiful. Exhale. Gently explore, deepening your pose by sinking into the hips. Side stretching to the left. Inhale. Good. Side stretching to the right. In a reverse warrior position. Exhale. Turn to the right. Back heel grounding. Right arm sliding down your back leg. Left arm fully extending. Bicep close to the ear. Maximum lengthening of the left side. Body. Ensure that you are not supporting too much on the right hand. The support comes from the deep core and your beautiful regulated breath. And stay for one more deep inhalation. Exhale, bring hands down. Again, let's do one vinyasa to downward facing dog. And feel free as you go through this sequence today. You might even skip the vinyasas and directly come to down dog, perhaps using this, these spaces in your practice to rest in child's pose as well. So please feel free to level the practice according to the intensity the body needs. Come up and tip toes, inhale. Exhale, knees to chest, look forwards. Next inhale, please walk, step, jump or float. Find your way to the front. Good, exhale, forward bending. Please rise up to standing and give the arms a big, beautiful stretch upwards. Exhale and bring the hands back down to the mat again. We take a halfway lift. Inhale, look upwards. Exhale, step your left foot back. This time, come directly to high lunge pose. High lunge pose. Inhale, arms upwards. Very nice. Exhale, side stretch to the right. And then on the inhale, reverse warrior, turn to the left, back heel grounding, take the right arm up and over. Beautiful. Side angle pose, exhale right elbow to the knee or the option of the right hand to come all the way down to the mat. Extend your left arm forwards. Stay with the breath. And then here you take the option, if you wish, to start to float the right arm upwards as well. Minus the support of that bottom arm and steps up the level of intensity of your side angle, but prepares you for deeper side body engagements. With that understanding, let's hold the pose that we are in for five, four, three, two, Beautiful. One, please place your left hand to the hip and bring the right hand all the way down to the mat. You will lower the right knee down to the mat by sweeping the right foot back gently. Come to a kneeling position, kneeling on the right knee. Right knee comes down. Very nice. Turning to the left, preparing yourself. When you're ready, extend the left thumb upwards. And this is a very nice supported side plank shape. In this pose, you are pressing and grounding the left foot, keeping that left leg straight and creating a length from the left foot to the crown of the head. As you spread out the right arm from the foundation of a strong right palm. Right palm is flat, safely taking the weight to the wrists. Right shoulders are broad. And if you feel strong, go ahead and try lifting the right knee off the mat, floating that right leg in a tuck. Take the option to hold here or keep the knee on the mat. One final option, if you wish, explore extending the right foot forwards in front of you. Good, developing strong inner legs for five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Lower the knee down 
And you want to do a side body stretch from this position. Yes, take the right arm up and over to the left. Same as what we did from a reverse warrior, but now from a kneeling pose. This will help you release all the tension that you built up in the side body from the strong support pose. And also allow you to find more length. So we stay for five. Four. Three. Two. And one. That'll do as you place your hands down to the mat in front of you. Send your right leg up and over the body, setting the foot down gently behind you as you lift up the right hand. Flip the body over and inhale, lift the hips as high as possible, revolve the heart upwards and reach with the right arm with open, open shoulders. Come to Kamakarasana, Walting Pulse. Good. And that'll do, placing the hands back to the mat again. With the feet together, let's do one vinyasa, taking you to downward facing dog. Those of us that wish can arrive at down dog directly or just maintain a child's pose. Finding then the practice that suits the level of intensity you wish to achieve today. From here, come up and tip toes, inhale. Exhale, knees to chest, looking forwards. Next breath, to walk, jump, or float. Beautiful. Exhale, forward, bending. Inhale as you halfway lift. Now step your left. Now step your right foot back. High lunge pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, side stretch to the left. Beautiful. Inhale as you side stretch to the right. Turn it to a reverse warrior. Back heel grounding, open hips. Left arm extending up and over. Right hand crawling down your back leg. And then from this position, exhale to find a side angle pose. Left elbow resting against the knee, or perhaps the left palm all the way down, resting lightly against the mat. Stay in the top arm as a small wrap in the tricep. You are trying to, as a guide, face your palms downwards in this position. You are lengthening from the back heel to the fingertips. Find that length as actively as you can. And again, one level of intensity deeper is to extend that left arm along with the right so that you build the awakening of the strength of the side body supporting this pose. We hold for five. Four, three, two, and one, releasing the hands come down and the left knee lowers by bringing the left foot back. Drop the left knee down, turn to face the right side of the mat. Good, and when you're ready, spread out the right arm to find your supported side plank position. Grounding the right foot. Your foot, hips, shoulders, and head all in one plane. Good. Everything feeling nice and open in the body. Find a good and beautiful and stable and safe support on the left palm. Left arm straight, left shoulder strong. And start to lift that left knee off the mat. Or stay with the left knee down. That is your option as well. Again, one final option today. If you wish, extend that left leg. See what it feels like. Breathe with a strong inner leg and side body engagement. Five. Four. Three. Two. And release, placing the hands down. Lower the knees down. Again, turn to face the side of the mat and like a reverse warrior, left arm extending up and over to the right. Good, a few breaths here to release the tension in the side body. And to increase that beautiful length. That'll do as you release, place the hands down in front of you on the mat. And you will take your left foot up, flip it over, set it down on the mat behind you. Left hand lifts off, hips are high, chest is open and reach with that left arm, trying to find the front of the mat in Kamat Karasana. Beautiful wilding poses, everyone. 
Stay for five, four, three, two, and flip it back, plank pose position. Here is an opportunity for yet another vinyasa or just arriving at downward facing dog. Good, and from downward facing dog. Please come up and tip toes and inhale. Exhale, knees to chest, looking forwards. Next breath, you walk, jump rope, flow to the front. Beautiful, and from a halfway lift to a forward bend, exhale. Now rise up to standing. If the arms are big, beautiful, stretching upwards. Hands come down to the heart center. Let's do a balancing pose on the right leg. So begin to lift the left knee up to the chest. Stay here in your top to maintain that your hips are level squared. You have a neutral pelvis. Slowly swing that foot outwards like a door. And you have the option here to guide the foot to the opposite inner leg as high up your thigh as possible for a tree pose. Those of us that wish might be exploring a half lotus instead. If you are in half lotus, maybe take that left arm back behind you to clasp the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb. Beautiful. So with the right arm now, extend it up and over to the left to slowly, slowly, please do this very carefully. Find your balancing as you side stretch. Takes you to the exploration of bending tree pose. As you lengthen all the way to the left, you are pressing against the outer curve to keep the balance. Good. Very challenging. <laughs> Very challenging. Okay. And that will do release. Come back up. Unbind if you are binding. Uncross your legs if you are in lotus. Set your left foot all the way to the back of the mat. We step back. Beautiful. Warrior two. From warrior two, reversing the warrior, take the right arm up and over to the left. Inhale. Exhale to side angle pose. Right elbow against the knee. Or right hand down to the mat. Left arm extend forwards. Reverse again on the inhalation. Beautiful. On exhale, can you find Prasarita Padutanasana? So on the exhale with the feet parallel to each other, legs wide apart. Place your hands to the hip, inhale, look up. Exhale, fold from the hip. Let's come down. Good, with the hands on the mat, underneath the shoulders. If you find yourself really tight here, you can keep the knees micro bent while maintaining healthy lengthening of your spine. And your work is to straighten the legs to create the stretch that you need. If you have straight legs, then go ahead, walk the hands down, guide the crown of the head all the way down to the mat, and stay with the breath as we hold for five. Four, three, two, and one. Take a halfway lift. Inhale. And please slowly rise all the way back up to standing again with one more breath. Now step to the front of the mat and begin again to balance. This time, balancing happening on the left foot. So lift the right knee up to the chest and take a moment here, feeling the alignment of your hips. Good. If you feel that the hips are equal, equal, and you have a nice neutral pelvis, and you are very stable, balancing in the four corners of the left foot, start to swing the shin out to the side without moving the buttock. Good. Same consideration as what we did earlier from hands and knees. Now, option to bring the foot to the inner thigh or finding a half lotus. Your half lotus has the option of binding. Good. Both options, you are actively pushing the right knee back, back and back. Extend your left arm and find a side body stretch to the right. As you lengthen to the right, remember to counterbalance by pushing the body against the outward curve. Stay exploring this beautiful, beautiful bending tree pose for five, four, three, two, 
and one, please step back gently to find warrior two. Hiya, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> inhale, spread your arms. Next, inhale, reverse your warrior. Next, exhale, side, angle pose. Beautiful, reverse the warrior again, one breath in. Both legs straight, feet pointed towards the right side of the mat. Prasarita Parottanasana, hands on the hips, inhale, look up. Exhale, folding. Place the hands on the mat underneath the shoulders. This variation, walk the hands forward and stretch them as far out in front of you as possible. As you do so, lengthen your tailbone back in the opposite direction and pull the spine. Good, now take the right arm and thread it under the left arm and see if the right hand can hold the left ankle. With your left hand, continue to crawl forwards and tuck the head underneath that shoulder. See if the left hand can walk as far to the right side of the mat as you can, creating a stretching of the shoulder. And if you can, you might even hold the opposite ankle as the option. And then finally, leveraging yourself by turning the body to face the front. Deep twist, shoulder opener, side body stretch, and hip opener. Good. Exhale, release what you are doing. Untwist the spine. Take one breath to lengthen the arms forwards again. Use that breath to lengthen the tailbone backwards as well. And then when you're ready, extending the opposite arm, which is the left arm, grabbing the right ankle. Right arm stretch forward. Head goes underneath the right shoulder. And the right hand walking to the left. And if it means that you can catch the opposite ankle, beautiful. Then leave it yourself deeper into the twist. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one, untwist gently. Good, place the hands on the hips, inhale. Ensure that you are not feeling nauseous or giddy or light in the head. Next, inhale takes you back up fully. Good, now step back to the front of the mat. Good, take a breath in, arms up, inhale. Forward bending, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Walk, jump or float your way back, exhale to do one vinyasa, to downward facing dog. From downward dog, let's hop our way to a seated position. Beautiful, extend both feet forwards in front of you in Dandasana pose. That means your legs straight, the feet are flexed, the toes point towards the head, the hands on either side of the body, and you have a proud, proud chest. You sit with a nice vertical, straight spine. From here, let's go into Janu Sirasasana. You bring the left foot to the inner thigh of the right leg, just like what we did earlier from a tree pose, except now we are seated. Take the arms up, inhale to give yourself length. Exhale, reach forward and clasping the foot with both your hands. If you need to, you keep the knees slightly bent. Take a breath in, look up, lengthen, try to achieve a straight spine here. On the exhale, start to walk the buttocks away from each other. Slide the heel forward until the legs are straight. If the leg is straight, then gently, gently come down. Belly towards thigh, chest towards knee, chin towards shin. And inhale to lengthen. Exhale, find the depth of your stretching. Work with the breath. Good. Staying present in your pose. And that'll do. Inhale, rise up fully. And as you extend the arms all the way upwards, exhale, create a twist for your body by bringing the right hand to the left knee. Beautiful twist with a straight spine, maintaining length in both sides of the body. And next we find the revolt variation of Janu Sirusasana, which is the Paribrita. Left arm up and over to the right, inhale and stretch, lengthening the side body. 
So those of us that are able to will be holding on to the right foot with the left hand. Keep the head tucked underneath the left shoulder like what we did with that revolved white-legged stretching pose earlier. Staying here now with as much length in the side body as possible, which even means that you are trying to ground the left sit bone as best as you can. Beautiful. Release and come back up. Inhalation. And that was the pose we practiced in the basic level class. Now let's progress now to the essential level pose, which is the Parivrita Surya Yandrasana, or the compass pose. So Veronica and Hazel are now cradling the front shin to the chest. And this creates a little more stretch in the hips to prepare them for the deeper expression. When you're ready, answering the phone, bring that right foot to the ear. Good. Try to maintain the length of your spine as you do this, not allowing the lower back to compensate for your tight hips. Now you're ready. So your next movement is to thread as much of the right arm underneath your bent right leg as possible. Sweep the arm back and find a grounding on the side of the mat. You are going to hold on to that right foot with the left hand, hold at the ankle or hold at the foot itself. Like Hazel, you might be modifying by using a strap to help to facilitate this grip. Revolving the body means turning to the left, opening the heart, looking underneath that left shoulder and staying with that beautiful, beautiful length in the left side body. Even you try to energetically ground your right sit bone in this position as you work to strongly engage the leg to keep it lengthened. Lengthening the right leg as much as you can. And the pressure of the leg against the arm and the right arm pressing against the leg will keep the leg in place. Stay with one more breath here. And that will do. Gently release. Lower the leg down and prepare now for the intermediate level pose, which is going to be Visvamitrasana, Flying Warrior Pose. So bringing the left foot to the side of the hip so that you can inhale to rise up to a low kneeling position. Stay here or take the option of lifting the back knee off the mat to come to high kneeling position or high lunge position. Visvamitrasana or Flying Warrior then can be practiced with the back knee resting on the mat to support or the back leg straight to take it to a full expression of the pose. Again, bringing the right arm behind the leg on the mat as the foundation as you revolve and ensure that you have the leg pressing against the arm and the arm presses against the leg to keep the leg in the air. Your left arm is also facilitating the lift. Lastly, there is a strong lift of the kneecap to fully extend as best as possible. <laughs> and then gently release, coming back down. Taking a moment and breathe, and we can slide the feet back to bring knees down to the mat in a child's pose position. And we take a moment to rest the body. When you're ready, to do this one more time. Rise back up and send the legs forward sitting in Dandasana on the mat. This time bring the right foot into the inner thigh of the left leg. With the left leg fully extended, inhale arms up. Exhale lengthen forward and clasping the foot. You can keep the knee again slightly bent if you have tight hamstrings so as to maintain a healthy lengthening of your spine. Working with the breath to create more lengthening with every inhalation and the depth of your stretching on the exhale. Janu Sirasasana, guiding the crown of the head, breath by breath, closer towards your big toe. Inhale as you rise up, let's revolve the body. Prepare for the next pose with a nice length of the spine and then when you're ready, extending the right arm up and over to the left. 
staying with that reach of that right side or if you can you bring the arm all the way down to clasp the foot ensure that the head is underneath the right shoulder and able to gaze upwards towards the ceiling body remains revolved and open in this pose parivrita janu stirasasana the revolved head to knee pose inhale to rise back upwards again exhale as you lower the arms down let's get ready to cradle the shin so left shin left shin left shin to the chest keeping your right foot exactly where it should be take the next few breaths creating a stretching of your hip good and remember to maintain that healthy lengthening of your spine now as you answer the phone good your next movement is to thread as much of the left arm underneath your left leg as possible. And then start this now, slowly, slowly. Take your time, no rush. The higher up you can bring the left leg over your shoulder, the deeper will be the expression of the pose. And the more stable is your practice as well. Foundation of the left hand, you can be on the fingertips. Beautiful press of the shoulder against the knee and the lift of the left knee to lengthen and straighten. And find your beautiful expression of this pose. Don't forget to revolve the body in the opposite direction. Looking underneath the right shoulder, finding that beautiful length in the right side of the body. But also you are energetically finding a grounding of your left sit bone as best as you can. Good. So when you're ready, bring your cells back down again and we will prepare for Visva Mitrasana. Taking this shape one step deeper in its level of complexity. Bring the right foot to the side so that you can slowly lift your way up to either a low kneeling or a high kneeling pose your choice of practice. Bring as much of that left arm underneath the left leg as possible again and have the grounding of the left palm in the corner of the mat. You carry the left leg over the left shoulder by wrapping it and with the front press of the leg against shoulder and shoulder against leg, hold on to that foot or the ankle and revolve the body again as you try extending the leg. Good, take your time, no rush. Find balancing in every step of the way. Your foundation arm can be micro bent. That is one beautiful tip that I can give as well. So that you can make a small shelf in the left upper arm to help carry the leg a little bit more. Okay, beautiful practice. And remember, this practice is not objective driven. And even if we attempt but don't achieve a particular pose, we have a lot of fun along the way. And the consistency of your practice is going to lead you to more and more poses that you would never expect that your body could achieve. When you're ready, let's come back up from a child's pose. To conclude our practice today with one inversion. And today's practice will be a Salamba Sirasasana, which is a supported headstand. Feel free if you do not wish to do an inversion in your sequence, then lying on the mat with the legs elevated is a beautiful option here. Or perhaps you are not yet confident to maintain a full headstand. Then you will be just practicing with your toes still on the mat in a half headstand position. Practice with the hands clasped together and your elbows on the mat is shoulder width distance. Guiding the crown of the head down and with the hands pressed into the back of the head. Then lifting the knees off the mat, try to straighten or lengthen the legs as best as you can. And your objective is to walk the feet in as close to the foundations as possible so that you can achieve a beautiful stacking of your hips. Then stay here with the toes as lightly touching the mat as possible. Or we'll take your option today. We want to slowly explore sliding the feet wide apart. So keep the feet light, maintain strong foundation on the arms and start to spread those legs, the toes on the mat. 
And then your last and final option, if you are able to find a strong foundation to push, the feet start to lift, the spine starts to straighten out beautifully. And then work on closing those legs from a straddle position. Did you close those legs? Still, you are trying to maintain the stack of the hips over the crown of the head. Otherwise, you might be overturning. Now let's come down the same way you came up into a straddle position. Legs as wide apart as possible. Strong engagement of the outer hips to facilitate this. And then try to reach the mat with your toes. And then once you are on the mat, gently slide the feet back together again. And lower knees down, taking a moment, resting in child's pose. From child's pose position, flipping the body over. And taking rest. In Shavasana, corpse pose. So thank you very much everyone for joining today's sequence. Thank you Veronica and Hazel as well. Continue to practice with joy in the body and peace in the heart. Namaste and see you soon.